Yeah, it's cute. You know, I fear no man, so I want him to be that old savage Mike. He says he's going to kill me. Is that is that what you're going to do, Mike? Because I'm ready. I, I want that killer. I want the hardest match possible Friday night, and I want there to be no excuses from everyone at home when I knock him out. So is, is that what you're going to bring, homicidal? And what would you lose if you lose this fight? Thank you. I'm not going to lose. But, but you, you say that in the last minute of the second I am countdown. not going to lose. Did you hear what I said? Thank you. It is happening. He is the one and only, the former problem child, now known as simply El Gallo. He is breaking records. He is breaking barriers. He is disrupting the fight game each and every time he enters the ring. He is the one and only Jake Paul. Make some noise for the great Jake Paul, everyone. Listen, the word icon, superstar, trailblazer, all that gets used very loosely these days. But this man, his style, impetuous. His defense, impregnable. Often imitated, never duplicated, one of one. They don't make them like him anymore. The pride of Brownsville, arguably the most famous boxer of the last 50 plus years returning to the ring for the first time in about four years. The one and only, the baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson. Everyone together, the baddest man on the planet, now and forever, Iron Mike Tyson. Mike. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Th thank you. Fight week. You haven't been in one of these for about four years. You did an open workout yesterday. Everyone's asking you why, how. Give us the reason. Forget about all that. Old news at this point. Everyone wants to know what's going through your mind. Is the old mic back? Is vintage mic back? Let us know. Are you talking to me right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm back. Yeah. You're the star. I'm just happy to be here. I love you too, thank you. Jake, there have been moments in the buildup to this fight where it did feel like the old Mike was back, vintage Mike. I'm not talking, you know, late 2000s Mike, I'm talking like, you know, 1989 Mike Tyson. You're the guy that he's talking about. You're the opponent, you're the guy that's gonna be facing off of them. You're watching this, you're listening to this. What goes through your mind when you hear him go into that dark place? Yeah, it's cute. You know, I fear no man, so I want him to be that old savage Mike. He says he's going to kill me. Is that, is that what you're going to do, Mike? Because I'm ready. I, I want that killer. I want the hardest match possible Friday night, and I want there to be no excuses from everyone at home when I knock him out. So is, is that what you're going to bring, homicidal? I'm just ready. That's all I can say. I'm just ready. I don't think anyone has ever referred to Mike Tyson's talk as cute before. That is a first. Mike, the line that I can't get enough of, the one that I keep watching over and over again, when you and your team were watching Jake after the Mike Perry fight, you said the difference between me and him is that he's a manufactured killer. He's, he's the killer that papers and TV made. I'm a natural born killer. That's what you said. That, that we felt in our bones. That's what everyone who grew up watching you remembers. Can you expand on that? Why is he manufactured and why are you for real? Yeah, that's what I said, that's what I said. Yeah, I was just wondering if you can expand on it. I mean, can you give me- It's just what it's I just said. It's just that, all right, that's, that's cool. Uh, when you hear that, do you agree with that, Jake? Is there something to that? Whatever he wants to think, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but the deadliest weapon on the planet is manufactured and that's a nuke. All right, I do believe that is accurate. Um, and what is going on with your ear over there, Jake, if I could just ask that? I'm not getting my shit bit off on Friday night, so I got my diamond spiked ear covers right there. Um, a, big, a big story, a big part of your history, of course, your first trainer, the great, the late great Customato. What do you think he would say of this spectacle going down on Friday? He'd be very happy. 
What do you think he would tell you about how to beat Jake Paul? He would be very happy. All right. Uh, let us go to the uh, media. I do believe there is some media here. We'll go to my man, Andreas Hale, up first. By the way, let us know where you're coming from and obviously who your question is being addressed to. Yes, sir. Andreas Hale from ESPN. Jake, this question is for you. We know this fight is eight rounds, two minutes. But is there any chance this goes to a decision or does this have to end in a knockout? No, someone's getting put to sleep. It's going to be a war, and we're both heavy hitters. It's not going the full 16 minutes. Andreas, go ahead. Mike Tyson, Mike, this question is for you. Given everything that you've gone through in your life and your career, you're coming back to the ring at the age of 58. How big would this be for your life to pull off this epic comeback and beat Jake Paul on Friday night? I'm just ready to fight. You know, I've, I've said everything I had to say. There's nothing else to say. I'm just looking forward to fighting. All right, thank you, Andreas. I do believe we have uh, another question right over here. Hey, guys, Joey Hayden, Dallas Morning News. My question is from Mike. Mike, when you look around at the stage around multiple title fights, one of the most anticipated women's fights in history behind you, there's a lot of people that say this fight between you and Jake isn't to the level of professional boxing or what most people perceive as professional boxing. Who better to ask than Mike Tyson, how does this fight line up for you? What, how does it feel? Well, um, the people speak for itself. I don't even have to ask them. All right, thank you very much, sir. Biggest live gate in U.S. boxing history outside of Las Vegas. Numbers don't lie. So people want to see this, and that's an amazing accomplishment. Credit to Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano and Mike and everyone on the card as well. Naraj, Mario Barrios, Winderson, everybody, Bruce Garrett, every, literally everyone, Lucas, everyone. So we all did this together, and this is a, a statement that we had the biggest live gate outside of Vegas in U.S. boxing history. Hi, Mr. Tyson, I just want to ask a little question. Can you share us why did you say this sentence? The fear of losing is too much fighting than dying. And what would you lose if you lose this fight? Thank you. I'm not going to lose. <laughs> but but just, you say that in the last minute of the second I am not down. gonna lose did you hear what I said thank you I'm the best ever there's never been anybody as ruthless I'm Sonny listen I'm Jack Dempsey there's nobody like me from Nair Claw. there's no one that can match me my style is impetuous my defenses are pregnable and I'm just ferocious I want your heart I want his children praise be to God yeah well done well done Mike can, can I, I ask, ask if you heard that from another young man from Brooklyn what did yes, that mean? Yes, he was very, very eloquent, but that day I was off my meds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it mean to you, Shushu, to be on a card with a legend like Mike Tyson who comes from the same part of the world as you? Man, it means the world to me. It's honestly something that I would have never thought about. You know, I, around, around the time I started boxing, he was already retired, not even thinking about him coming back around and doing this here. And this is honestly just a dream come true. I want to give a big thanks to Mike Tyson for being able to have me on this card, MVP, everybody that was, you know, a part of this whole situation. And I'm just ready to put on the show, man. I'm ready to put on the show and show everybody what the Shushu Show has to deliver. Hey guys, Ryan Morick here with Fox News. This is for Mike. You say you're not going to lose, but the odds say differently. Uh, how disrespected does that make you feel? And why do you think you are the underdog? Thank you. Hey, um, I'm fine with everything. I'm fine with everything. This is a question for Mike and Jake. Uh, we've really appreciated your shit talking of each other, um, but we thought there was enough negativity in the world, so we were curious if you had something nice to say about one another. Well, <laughs> I'm getting booed. Anything come to mind, Jake? Well, I think he's going to look good in the picture when he's on the canvas and I'm standing over him. Uh, my name is Kevin Garcia. I'm with Fight Hype. And my first question is for Jake. 
Um, Jake, you know, most boxers, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't name one of their first 10 opponents. Obviously, you've put on a lot of shows. Um, we're at a spectacle right now, a really big event. What do you say to the people who criticize your decision making when most boxers, we don't follow their career at this point? Yeah, I'm blessed to be in the position I am to be highly criticized. That just means I'm doing something right. And no one has had a boxing career like mine. It'll be studied and, and judged, but I've risen to the top in four years because I've taken risks. I was the underdog all the way up until Nate Robinson, and that's something that people don't remember or don't give any credit to, but I put it on the line against some of the best in the sport every single time, and that's why I'm here on Netflix against the biggest name in boxing right now. Man, I, I just, there's a lot of shit talk online saying you're going to kill me and, and it's just nothing in person. It's, I don't know. It, it's uh, pretty boring, pretty fucking boring. Do you think these are mind games? I don't know, man. It, it's not working, whatever these games are. It's not going to change the result of what happens Friday night. Yes, this is Jacob Dedimore with the ticket in Dallas. This question is for Jake. Jake, you were just talking about your career and how it's grown, and you've said in the past that you want to be taken seriously as a boxer. So if that is your goal, when can we expect you to start fighting legitimate contending fighters in your given weight class? I think you're the same dumbass from the other event. I asked that, that same, same dumbass guy, question. And you didn't answer And you're, and you're sa sitting here disrespecting Mike Tyson to his face once again. I asked you, you a question. Do you not think that he's a serious boxer? He walks away. All right, back to the media over here. Chris Beltran, House of Highlights. This is from Mike. Mike, do you see yourself fighting again after this fight? And if you could pick someone to fight Jake next, who would you pick? I'm just interested in this fight right here at the moment. And who would you pick to fight Jake next if you could? I'm not talking about fighting anybody, only Jake. Thank you. Um, a lot of us came up on Mike Tyson, millennials, Gen X, and obviously, you know, further back, like Muhammad Ali, et cetera, et cetera, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Jake, you've resonated with Gen Alpha and Gen Z. Uh, from a boxing perspective, from a legacy perspective, what do you feel like you're bringing to the sport and the future of boxing? Yeah, man, just excitement, excitement. Big fights, big knockouts. You know, a lot of fighters go in there and they have boring ass fights like Floyd Mayweather. And I've brought in up a lot of excitement to the sport, knocking people out in the biggest platforms possible, going against the biggest names and making matchups that the fans want to see. Crossover MMA fights, things like that, fighting other massive names in the sport. So I'm going to continue to do the biggest fights, the biggest pay-per-views, the biggest streams across the board and just continue to push myself. And I think people resonate with my content and just promotional ability the disrespect it's palpable i love it i love it you know hey when i see dumb people saying dumb predictions i, I just feel bad for them so at the end of the day who wants to bet on it huh does anyone want to bet on it i'm i'm shaking hands so how much we want to bet on this you said mike how much you want to bet he said he's good that's what i thought bitch made how much you want to bet mike dyson how much how much you? How much? As okay. much as you're willing to lose, brother. So okay, okay. So I'll give you my my property. How much? In India. How much? My property is like more than one million. I'll okay, give you. Okay, deal. Deal. How much you want to bet? How much you want to lose, bro? You, I, I, the time I spend taking a shit is how much you make in your whole life, buddy. Oh. Shut the fuck up. How much you want to lose? A million dollars, deal. We got one million here, one million here. Okay. Come on. You guys want to fucking do this? Put your money where your mouth is. How much money? Exactly. How much money? I did speak English. Exactly. How much money? A ring, deal. Let's go. I'm, I'm following up on all this shit. A million? A million? 20 bucks right here. That's what I thought. To the world. I'm just ready to fight. Yeah, there he is. We're gonna take a little break. We're gonna wrap this bad boy up. The Kisa Bedarian's gonna square them all up. Don't go anywhere. Friday, November 15th, AT&T Stadium. 280 million subscribers around the world. The most watched combat sports event of all time. We'll see you in two days. Going up against El Gallo. The one and only, the disruptor, Jake Paul.
One last time, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. All right, let's bring the co-headliners back up. Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, these four athletes making history on Friday. What a collection of characters, of fighters. Here they are, Friday, only on Netflix, available worldwide, no subscription, no pay-per-view, no added cost, no nothing. If you subscribe, it's yours on Friday. And while we're up, let's say hello one last time to all the fighters competing on this historic card on Friday evening. All 14, come on up one last time for a photo op. Seven fights.